Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to Still We Persist. My name is Sienna Kasky. I use she and her pronouns and I'm the Aya Women of Color Initiative Leadership Liaison. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Gunera. I'm filling in for tomorrow today. I am the Aya Women of Color Peer Facilitator. I'm excited to be back on here. And before we introduce our amazing guest, we do want to acknowledge that Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampanefu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette, Treaty, Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are a part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians. And so the person to my right is Sneha, and she is a fourth year industrial engineer with an option in engineering management and an intern at the Center for Diversity and Inclusion in the College of Engineering, an ambassador for the College of Engineering, and the president of the Engineering Student Council. Wow. Like, I just want to give like, applause for that. Like, hell yeah, go, like, go you. you. But yeah, yeah, like, introduce yourself. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for having me both. Um, that is me. I do all those things, and it's been a crazy four years, and I'm excited to chat about engineering. Yes. So something that Sneha started, is it this year? Mm -hmm. Well, like, or a like whole last year. Ago, year? Almost. Okay. So she has a blog on Instagram called Engineer Like a Lady. <laughs> and it. it is, it's been something that I know that a lot of women of color in STEM have found community with. And mm -hmm. I just want to know, like, why did you start it? Yeah. How did you start it? And what's been the most amazing Definitely. thing about it? Definitely. Well, I was just helping some of my like younger friends who were applying to college and mm. thinking about engineering and I just realized there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know when I was coming into OSU mm. and engineering and just a lot of like survival tips and I felt like oh I've been struggling for a few years and mm -hmm. I would hate for anyone else to be struggling that much so um, obviously engineering is white male dominated and I was not seeing a lot of myself in my classrooms mm. or um, even on social media and things like that. So I kind of created my own platform to talk about the things that I've been seeing mm. and also just talking about my experience. Like the biggest thing I wanted to get out of it was to normalize being a normal brown woman with hobbies and interests in STEM. And I think there's been a lot of like stereotypes of what an engineer is like, oh, like they're antisocial and you're always in the lab or you're always like having all nighters doing homework. And it is a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's, you know, we're all just people and engineering is just one thing that is that we have in common. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to create a platform and a community to talk about some of the things that we should be talking about and that we aren't talking about. And then the other thing is really like, I've met so many amazing women and women of color in engineering on my own, like on this campus or at conferences and things. And we all have really, really similar experiences, yet we all feel so isolated. Mm. And that, that was really like interesting to me. So I just wanted to bring us together and try to erase that feeling of isolation yeah. when we're not isolated, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's so important and truly amazing because I, heard from someone who is uh, I can't remember what engineering she's in but uh, she was like I don't even have people of color in my classroom mm -hmm. like let alone women of color mm -hmm. and so for me like what is it like being a woman of color in STEM even though you are so empowered and you are totally. so powerful and yeah. confident but I mean it, you can't be confident all the time yeah. like it's difficult to be for sure two words imposter syndrome oh <laughs> That's always been like such a struggle and like I felt like going into engineering everyone's like why did you pick engineering story has always been like oh I loved math and science growing up and like for me that wasn't really true like I struggled with math and science a lot like mm. I was kind of good at it for a while but then at some point I was just like mm, I don't really know what's going on anymore mm -hmm. and so when I came into college I picked engineering because it is a secure field and I knew that I would have a job coming out of college mm. but I actually started as a mechanical engineer mm. just because I literally picked a random engineer and I was mm. like mm, I don't really know what engineering is so in that sense I wish I did general engineering because then you get to learn like everything but um, like a couple terms in, I was just struggling with mechanical, mm. didn't really like it, and I didn't really see like what the end goal was. Mm. So I worked a lot with my advisor to find kind of what engineering 
fits with my interests and I'm a very like organized person. Mm -hmm. I love working with people, mm -hmm. which again is like an anti-stereotype of engineering. Um, but industrial engineering is very much like working with people and like mm -hmm. fixing systems and making people come together for something. And I think that's something I really love mm -hmm. is like bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like it's been a journey. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I think like STEM is hard. And I've noticed that, like, I'm not in STEM at all. And I've noticed that there's been kind of a big push recently to get more women into STEM. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that there's groups like Chick Tech and mm -hmm. other really, really neat organizations that are doing more outreach mm -hmm. to women and people of color to mm -hmm. get them into STEAM, STEAM STEM fields. Mm -hmm. So, like, do you think that you can see yourself in those positions oh, later yes. helping others? Yeah, like, I totally want to. I think, like, you know, so many women of color before me have shattered glass ceilings mm -hmm. for me, so it only makes sense for me to do that for the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, however, I don't think you need to be in like specifically a role that works towards mm -hmm. like in a nonprofit like Chick yeah. Tech or something. I think those organizations are amazing and I have worked with them in the past and would love to continue working with them, but I really want to bridge that gap between like engineering person and like diversity inclusion mm, person mm -hmm. because those don't need to be two different people like yeah. it really should be all in the same role and like mm -hmm. I think in the last few years like working for the College of Engineering I've really realized that because obviously I do work in diversity and inclusion but it shouldn't be like a siloed thing it's mm -hmm. like something we should be talking about in our classrooms like okay. we should be talking about like those hard conversations and when you're recruiting, we shouldn't be having like recruitment and then diversity mm -hmm. recruitment. It should like be one. one like thing. it should be something that we all care about. And I think right now, because the status quo is that we don't talk about diversity mm -hmm. and inclusion, it makes sense that we're always like, oh, and diversity and inclusion. But my hope is that we would all like eventually adapt that mentality. And so yeah, in my future, like I definitely want to do more diversity mm -hmm. and inclusion work in my personal roles like I want to go into management mm -hmm. it's something I see myself kind of climbing that corporate mm -hmm. ladder and uh, becoming a CEO of course <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I think that's important to ask those questions of any company that I'm involved with or just the corporate world of engineering like why are less than one percent of fortune 500 CEOs women of color yeah like that yeah. can't be a coincidence right mm -hmm. and so there's so much that happens along the way that really like leads to that being a result so that's like that's kind of the questions I'm asking mm -hmm. like on my blog mm -hmm. but those are also the questions like that I need that I want to be asking in the real world mm -hmm. and want other people to be asking that so a lot of times like I'll have conversations like for example last year at my internship mm -hmm. um, just working with my mentor, I would be like, hey, did you notice that that this thing happened to the woman of color, but not to like the white male mm -hmm. that was in the same meeting? Mm. And he would be like, oh, I didn't notice that. But now like through us having those conversations, yeah. like by the end of my internship, he'd like be bringing those things up to me. Mm. So that's like kind of that's what cool. I want to do is like just start having those conversations in the place where people aren't having yeah. those conversations. Yeah. 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 Um, so, like, I guess one of my questions for you, which is kind of a loaded question. Okay. <laughs> um, so, like, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, like, what is kind of your vision for diversity and inclusion, specifically in, like, a field like engineering? Mm -hmm. It is loaded. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it's well, a loaded Well, because there's, question. like, two parts, right? There's, like, academia, mm -hmm. and then there's, like, the corporate field, and, like, all engineers need to go, to, go through academia to get to the corporate world. Yeah. So you gotta like really like backtrack. And so in industrial engineering and um, there's one thing that we do which is called the five whys. So like mm -hmm. when you're trying to, it's like root causes mm -hmm. for a problem, you have to ask why, 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 why. Five times to get to the root cause. So like if you go all the way like, why aren't there women of color in CEO positions? Well, maybe they're not being, um, considered for promotions and job opportunities as equally? And is that because mm -hmm. of a culture in mentorship? Mm -hmm. Like oftentimes in big companies, because a lot of people holding um, powerful positions are 
white men, mm -hmm. they will often better mentor other white men because they see themselves mm -hmm. there. So how can we fix those mentorship programs to make sure women of color are getting the same opportunities mm -hmm. as everyone else in terms of promotion and growth in a company? But then before that, are there even that many women in that company, mm -hmm. right? Like, right. so then how do we get more women into the company? Recruitment. And then mm -hmm. the recruiters, when they come to a college campus, are you just going to the general career fair or are you hitting up like the Center for Diversity yeah. and Inclusion, which we do a lot of info sessions with companies. And that's like a great way to diversify mm -hmm. your applicant pool because you have students of color coming to your to your info sessions when they might not even know anything about your company mm. and they might not be going to the mm -hmm. career fair or it's just a really great way to meet the recruiters and get one-on-one -on -one, like FaceTime. Mm -hmm. So then there's that and then like from there it's like okay now let's talk about like diversity and inclusion in engineering mm -hmm. like are, are people switching out of their major like I almost switched out of engineering yeah. mm. before I found industrial engineering because mm. I was like this sucks, I don't belong here. Yeah. And so many people mm. don't make it past that hump. Mm. So then how do we retain women of color, mm -hmm. students of color in engineering? Mm -hmm. You know, having faculty members that are women of color so you can relate to them, talking about diversity and inclusion, creating support groups, like things like that are all there. And then also going farther back, you also gotta recruit into engineering. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's like where Chick Tech mm -hmm. and like programs like that come in really handy. Of course, like the College of Engineering and like our clubs here on campus mm -hmm. also do outreach to K through 12. So you really have to start all the way from like kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. Like the toys we play with, mm -hmm. right. the stories our parents tell us and mm -hmm. our teachers tell us, um, like what Barbie does. Mm -hmm. Like those things really do matter. Really and there's do, been yeah. a shift in our like life time I think for sure yeah. mm -hmm. so I just want to see a lot more of like continuous flow because it's like the higher up you go there's less and less women of color because at somewhere mm -hmm. along the way like some mm -hmm. people are dropping out mm -hmm. and no one is going to get them or mm -hmm. going to like protect them mm -hmm. so we really need to like all be thinking about how everything is like intentional mm -hmm. right it's yeah. not nothing is a coincidence yes you know? yes yeah yeah I just want everyone to get that through their heads. Like nothing is a coincidence. Yeah. Right? Like especially in academia, like we're not meant to be here. We're not even meant to be talking about this in mm. this room. Mm -hmm. right. If you really think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and so, I, like, thanks for saying all of that because yeah. that's yeah. so true. And we really have to reframe how we, like, basically exactly. parent our youth. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like a. It's not just like a systematic change. It's also like a generational change yeah. for sure and it's mm -hmm. just something that like every generation like I hope that for like us and like the kids that we may mm -hmm. or may not have mm -hmm. that they feel at least a little bit more supported mm -hmm. right. in whatever it is that that looks like for them. Mm -hmm. It's all about like representation and I think like social media and the internet while is a scary thing like is a really powerful mm -hmm. tool yeah. if used right which is mm -hmm. exactly going back to my yeah. blog. Right. Why I did that because like the story is always like I never had a role model who is an engineer. I never had anyone in my family who was an engineer mm -hmm. so I wouldn't mm -hmm. have ever thought to pick engineering mm -hmm. and that is a story you hear countless times mm -hmm. and so how do we provide role models in these roles even if you're not related to them if they're not in oh. your circle so like social media is a great way to expose yourself to things that like years and years ago before social media existed you would have a bubble and mm -hmm. whether you liked it or not that was where you learned about the world from right. so I think it's a really cool tool to be able to get to know the stories of people that you would never meet like yeah. in real life yeah. yeah so what's some of the really cool stories that you've been able to <laughs> like learn from and like yeah. uplift because I mean you I'm have a tr friend from like Trinidad yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. And you're meeting all these amazing women just everywhere just like on Instagram it's crazy like I'll get DMs mm -hmm. from women who are either still in school or working and they're like oh my gosh, like everything you said is so relatable. Wow. I really had the same thing that I just went through. Or like mm -hmm. sometimes people will message me and be like, what do you think about this? Like I just had this really weird experience in class and like mm. it really wow. upset me. Wow. Or you know, like literally things like that. And it's really interesting. Like again, like I said, mm -hmm. we're all going through the same thing, mm -hmm. like in different ways, in different countries, mm -hmm. in different schools. But like at the end of the day, it's very much the same. Like the rhetoric yeah. is the same. So we just like, really need to, it's cool to be able to provide tools for mm -hmm. one another and like I have had a really like, it's been a long journey to figure out how to respond to a lot of like 
these weird things mm -hmm. that you experience and you're like, was that sexist or am yeah. I overthinking it? Kind or was of it racist? racist? Yeah, and, and then... like, how do you, how do you, what do you say? Like, should I always be the person in class who's like, um, you know, like, do you right. want to be that person? Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you also got to like, like there are ways to go about it where you don't have to put yourself in like an mm -hmm. unsafe situation or like even just having someone tell you like you're not crazy for thinking like yeah. that, like that definitely did happen. Yeah. And sometimes that's like validation, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. But I mean, it's just crazy hearing the stories of people, but there's so many like tips that we can pick up from one another. Mm -hmm. Like even I've been learning so many like career tips for, you know, how to apply for jobs. And like the thing is, we oftentimes like sell ourselves short so mm -hmm. empowering us mm -hmm. to not do that mm -hmm. like there's a statistic out there somewhere that like um women will like apply for jobs that they feel like they're not qualified for at way less rates than men will like yeah interesting so, like if you look at a job description there are like 10 mm -hmm. um like rules or whatever qual like qualifications mm -hmm. that are preferred if a woman doesn't um fit all 10 of them, she's more likely to just not apply at all than like a guy who's like maybe fits only half of them. Like wow. he would still apply. So hmm. it's like learning how to like learning those things, you're like, hmm, why why do I feel like I can't yeah. apply for that? You know? Like you yeah. the more facts you have behind you, the more intentional you can be about like doing mm -hmm. crazy things that yeah. like people don't want you to do. Like people don't want you mm -hmm. to show up and step up in that way. Mm -hmm. So you got to like learn how to be that person that no one expects you to be. Ooh. But it's like kind of scary to do Ooh. that. Yeah. I want that in like big bold <laughs> letters right there. <laughs> Full of quotes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly. So I think like what is your favorite thing about engineering? Like what do you love about it? I love solving problems and like having the tools mm -hmm. to back up those solutions. Mm. Like I think that's been a really cool thing like in industrial engineering we make a lot of recommendations for like mm. what we should do. So like mm. if you have this process and it takes 30 minutes to go through this process, like I would have the tools to kind of really like go in depth and analyze that whole process and be like, how can we cut this down to like 15, mm. you know? Or even things like how are we thinking about prioritizing safety for our employees or, you know, just like really blending like engineering and people skills mm -hmm. to understand the world we live in. I mean, everything we're, like we live in this huge, mm -hmm. big system. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about that with academia and the corporate world, mm -hmm. it's all connected mm -hmm. and it's all, it's a pipeline. So I think that's all like industrial engineering is, but we like don't learn to apply it to social systems. Right. We're applying it to like manufacturing systems. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you gotta go that like extra step mm -hmm. to think about it in that way. but. I think it's really cool like you look at anything and you're like oh my gosh I can like now break this down and understand how it works and how yeah. I can make it better yeah or how I can make it more useful for people mm -hmm. who have different abilities maybe mm -hmm. like so I think that's my favorite part of engineering is we're constantly solving problems mm -hmm. um, we just got to make sure we're equipped with the tools to solve the right problems mm -hmm. in the right way. Mm -hmm. And since you're a woman of color in STEM you have that different perspective exactly. that so many <laughs> engineers don't have yeah. because it's a white male dominated for sure field. and that's like a conversation that probably in diversity and inclusion in STEM is one of the most had conversations mm -hmm. and it's a good conversation to have but also it's definitely underplayed yeah. in the sense that like companies will use the statistic that like more diverse teams make more profits and it's like mm. these are like it yes mm. this is true by correlation but like there's a lot of reasons in mm. between why that happens and that's like obviously because when you have three people like us in mm -hmm. a room that have three different perspectives and you give us one problem we can use our worldview to come up with three different problems mm -hmm. and it's not like even about race gender mm -hmm. ethnicity at this point it's really just about bringing different people together with different experiences that it's just a fact like when you have different experiences you look at the world mm -hmm. differently so if you have a ton of people who look and have had the same exact upbringing at a problem they're going to come up with very similar ideas yeah, true and like group think mm -hmm. is a thing where like you influence each other's ideas a lot more so like that's like the go-to corporate thing is mm -hmm. like we like diverse teams because they make more money and like 
that's really right. exploited is, of like yeah. people of color mm -hmm. or anyone mm -hmm. who's underrepresented because mm -hmm. it tells you like you're only important because you make you, us money exactly and so mm -hmm. it's so much more than that. And like, I think that's why, that's like when you only talk about diversity, that's only one third of the problem, right? Yeah. Like there's diversity, inclusion, and equity. equity. <laughs> and so like inclusion, like there's a business case for mm -hmm. that too. Like inclusion equals retention. Mm -hmm. And like, if you are only focusing on recruiting diverse people, but then you do nothing to include them and build that actual culture of inclusion mm -hmm. where everyone feels safe, heard, and also gets equal access to opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like that's the real crux of the problem. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't do those things, like people don't get retained and it's actually like way more expensive for companies to continuously hire and train mm. new employees. Yeah. So like you want to retain your employees. Mm -hmm. So like, why aren't we having that conversation about inclusion? Like the diversity yeah. thing is very, obvious you know mm -hmm. and the thing is like people of color belong in tech companies mm -hmm. not because we provide you more money but because we belong there like yeah. we have just as much right as anyone else to be at that table right and yeah so I mean we need to have the conversation about inclusion because mm -hmm. that's when like things really start mm -hmm. turning and things really start changing mm -hmm. for a long term wow that mm -hmm. just like, yeah. I feel like I was gonna walk out here and I'm right. like, I'm just gonna go <laughs> be a badass now. <laughs> because right. it really, I didn't even think about how, like there's these, like one third of the issue. Yeah. Like, when you talk about DEI work, diversity and equity and inclusion work, it's just, I think sometimes equity kind of gets like kicked off. For sure. A yeah. little bit and it's just like, oh, we'll push it to the side, we'll deal with that yeah, later. later. When that should be diversity. the core exactly. of it. But Diversity is probably like the easiest one yeah. to yeah. solve because yeah, it's a right. numbers game. Definitely. You just want to get more mm -hmm. people of color, more women in the room, then you can be like, we're diverse. And then you Solved. think you're done. Check. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, we're good. And yeah. then you realize that the workplace is still the same. Exactly. And still a harmful and toxic environment and then you lose those employees. And like, is that, isn't that like more violent to mm -hmm. bring people of color into an environment where they're not mm -hmm. valued? Mm -hmm. So like, yes. that mm -hmm. is unsafe. Like, I mean, a lot of times, like even when we're recruiting for more students of color, is it false advertisement? Mm -hmm. Do you know yes, what I mean? That's yes. something I think about all the time. Like, yes. it's good to recruit more students of color. Of course we need that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not ensuring that they're gonna have a safe and like they're gonna be retained when they come here, then why are we recruiting them in the first place? Exactly. You know, like you wanna have graduates mm -hmm. at the end. It's not just about having mm -hmm. them in your college. You wanna have them graduate mm -hmm. with that degree. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So kind of just to wrap us up and with all this beautiful information you've just given us, <laughs> are there any like positive or things that you've learned that's empowered you that mm -hmm. you want to share with the AYA community? Oh my gosh, like so much. Really just don't be afraid to speak up for yourself, mm -hmm. but also to take care of yourself. Yeah. Like this work is exhausting. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. exhausting. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's not your job or my job to mm -hmm. fix it, but it is important to start these conversations mm -hmm. and making each other mm -hmm. think. So taking care of yourself is a huge thing, mm -hmm. but I think it's been a lot of like, just don't be afraid of what other people might do if you do speak up or mm -hmm. how they might see you. Mm -hmm. I was so worried for a really long time that like, oh, people are gonna be really annoyed by my like, mm. especially my like engineering Instagram. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like always posting. Like people are gonna think I'm so annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like people are gonna think I'm bossy, whatever. Don't care, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like you're here for yourself and to uplift those around you. Mm -hmm. And if that's not part of the equation, then it doesn't matter. So you really just gotta hone in on one thing and be like, this is what I'm here for mm -hmm. and this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And nothing nothing can stop me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm ready to cry over here. <laughs> wow. That was such a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much for joining thank us. You for and like me. thank you yes. for all of the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sh like I think you have shaped College of Engineering in a different way that I, that we've ever seen on campus Thank before. You. So You're definitely leaving your mark. Yeah, yeah. you definitely I hope are. So. And I hope that someone continues that work as well. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Well, we will drop Sneha's information and ways to get to, get to connect with her um, in the little box below. Um, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>